Hey sixth grade, we are getting going with module nine, lesson two, which is titled Use Addition and Subtraction Equations to Solve Problems. Here on page 279, we have our I can statement, which we should be able to do by the end of this lesson. It says I can write and solve equations using addition and subtraction to represent real world situations involving an unknown. So that is what we're working on today. All right, flip your paper over so you're on page 280 and at the top it says build understanding. When solving an addition equation, you can model the equation on a balance scale like we see over here on the right. For the equation to remain true, both sides must remain equal or in the case of the balance scale, to be the same weight. If you remove something from one side, you must remove the same amount from the other side. So for question one, it says weights are shown on the scale. Boom, boom. Each square is one unit, but the value of the triangle X is unknown. The scale sides are balanced. So A is telling us to describe the weights on the left side of the scale and on the right side of the scale using both words and mathematical expressions. So when I take a look at the left side of the scale, um, I know that each square is one unit. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So nine squares equals nine units. Um, and over here we have on the right side, um, I guess I should probably label that as left. Hold on a sec. Um, right. We have one, two, three squares plus this unknown value of this triangle. So I would say, I would write something like 3 plus x equals 9 because it has to equal 9 units over here on the right side because it is balanced and equal to the left. Um, so that's kind of what I'm thinking. What, whoops, what equation represents the weights shown on the scale? And I would just use kind of what I already have up here describing the right, that 9 equals 3 plus x. Because we know that one side is definitely 9. We know the other side has to be 9. We just don't know the value of our triangle. C. How could you remove weights making sure that the scale is still balanced and use that to find the value of x? Ooh, that now we have to think a little bit harder. Um, so on the left side, we only have the squares which means on the right side we can only remove squares as well. We have to make sure we remove one, two, three from the right and then we only take one, two, three from the left. And then we'd see how many we have left. So I'm going to cross off the one, two, three squares on the right, one, two, three squares on the left, and then I would be able to count these squares that we have left. So one, two, three, four, five, six. I know I have six left. That means that x for our triangle has to be equal to six because we're still keeping the scale balanced. Now I need to figure out how I'm going to explain that in words here under C. So here's what I've got for my answer for C. It asks, how could you remove weights making sure that the scale is still balanced and use that to find the value of x? So I just explained in words what I did up here on the scale. If I cross off three one unit weights from both the left and right sides, the scale would remain balanced. X will be alone on the right side. And then I just look over at the left side to see how many squares are left and that tells me how many units that X is worth. Um, you can use my answer or you can write it your answer in your own words, how you would explain that. Question D is if, oops, I just jumped ahead again, darn it, is if you were removing weights from both sides of the scale, 
cross out the same number of weights on both sides of the scale until X is by itself. How much must the weight labeled X weigh? Explain how you know. Well, like we saw earlier when I was crossing things off of my scale, I crossed the three squares off the right side. I crossed one, two, three off the left side. So then X was all by itself and then on the right side. And then on the left we have six squares. That means that the X triangle is equal to six squares. So to explain what I did up here with the balance, I just wrote, I see that X balances the scale against six one unit weights. So X must equal six. And E is telling us to check your answer by substituting the value of X into the equation from up here on part B. So for part B, I have nine equals three plus X and we're thinking that X equals 6 so I'm going to substitute X for 6 so I would have 9 equals 3 plus 6 is that correct and I hope you say yes because y'all have been adding for a very long time 3 plus 6 definitely equals 9 um, all right let's move on to page 281 for step it out. It says a plant is six inches tall. After two weeks, the plant is 14 inches tall. What or how many inches did the plant grow? There's a question we're answering. How many inches did the plant grow? We know that we're starting with six inches. Then we get to 14 inches tall. So what information do you know? Well, we know that the plant starts at six inches. We know the plant grows to 14 inches. And then we're being asked, what do we need to find out? That's where our question, the question that's being asked of us comes in. We need to find out how many inches the plant grew. So I'm going to write that in the, on those lines. Okay, and so I wrote in the blanks, we need to find out how many inches the plant grew in two weeks. C says, you can represent how many inches the plant grew in two weeks with a variable X. How can you describe the relationship between the unknown amount, which is X, and the height of the plant at the start? Ooh, okay. So I have to start with or sorry, we have this unknown amount of X and then it wants us to use the height of the plant at the start. We know that the plant is six inches tall and then it grows X inches to equal 14. It grows X inches to 14 inches. Okay. So for question D, it is saying write an equation you can solve in order to answer the problem. Remember, we're starting with, or we have our unknown amount and the height of the plant at the start. So that would mean X plus those six inches equals 14. You can also model the problem using algebra, algebra tiles. Oh my goodness, I just learned how to talk. The sets of tiles on both sides of the gray rule are equal. So both of these sides are equal. If you remove one tile from one side, you must also remove one tile from the other side. Cross out tiles until X is by itself. How many tiles did you cross out on each side? How many tiles remain on the right side of the model? Okay, so we need to, I'm just gonna cross off all six of these over here. One, two, three, four, five, six. And we're not sure what that big one is worth yet. So if I crossed out six on the left, I need to cross out six on the right side. Five, six, 
so our questions are saying or blank one tiles were crossed out on each side we crossed out six on each side so six on the left six on the right blank one tiles are left on the right side we have one two three four five six seven eight there are eight tiles left on the right side what is the solution to the equation well these eight balance this rectangle right here so that means that x is equal to eight so what is the solution to the equation we're going to go with eight check your answer by substituting the value for x into the equation from up here at part d and combine the terms to solve is your answer correct so we started with x plus 6 equals 14 now we need to substitute 8 in for the x so 8 plus 6 equals 14 are we correct with our adding on that one and I'm gonna go with yes um, let's do one more on page 282 let's see instead of using a scale or algebra tiles you can subtract the same amount from both sides of, e of an equation and the two sides will remain equal this is known as the subtraction property of equality that was one of your vocabulary words um, make sure you have it in your notes so for three it says Sarah has eight dollars and fifty cents in her pocket she earned M dollars babysitting and now she has 2025 how much money did she earn babysitting so we that's what we have to that's the question right there that we have to answer so what does M represent M represents the money earned from babysitting so now if we're going to use M in our equation we're going to add M plus the original 850 in her pocket because when you add those two together it equals the twenty dollars and twenty five cents she now has how much do you need to subtract from both sides of an equation with to get the equation to only have M on the left side well to have M by itself over here on the left side we would have to subtract 850 from both sides um, so I'm going to say 850 and then we subtract 850 from both sides to isolate M that means we are going to get the M all by itself so here we subtract 850 over here on the right side we subtract 850 because what you do on the left side of the equal sign you have to do on the right side of the equal sign so 850 minus 850 equals whoops equals zero those cancel each other out and then we bring down the M that's where I messed up so 2025 minus 850 will tell us the value of M so after we subtract that we wind up with eleven dollars and seventy five cents so Sarah earned eleven dollars and seventy five cents babysitting we will do a lot more with this particular strategy in class so make sure you have your notes done you need your title your learning goal the vocabulary words on a regular sheet of notebook paper and then you need to make sure that you take your notes in your on your textbook pages so that you are ready for class all right i'll see you all at school bye